Okay, I'm here with Brett Pascal, leader, uh, lead animator on Company of Heroes 2, uh, moving from THQ to Sega. Um, how did that move go for you? I Well, I mean, obviously at first with everything kind of coming down to the wire there, it was a little tense, you know, uh, we weren't really sure exactly what was going to happen. But after the bankruptcy, uh, where Sega obviously purchased us off the auction, uh, you know, immediately they were, you know, there was only maybe like a day or so where we weren't really sure what was happening and they really quickly sent people up to meet with us, kind of ensure that we were on the right track or that, that we, they had plans that included what we were doing. Um, obviously it helps that you have a game that's essentially ready to ship, but ever since then it's been great. Like we got a little bit extra time. I think they recognized uh, moving the ship date was probably worthwhile and it gave us just that much more time to polish and, and tune. So. All in all, it's been great, and so far they've been really good and been in touch with us, and we've had uh, one of the Creative Assembly guys at our studio quite frequently to keep us up to date, so, so far it's great. Okay, um, you guys announced the Steam version of Company of Heroes, the original. Yep. Is this a version of the game that you guys have been working on, or something that came up while covering, coming over to Sega? No, that was always kind of in the works because of the Quizal server issues, where they're, we were no longer able to go on there. They were purchased, I believe. So. They, uh, we knew that inevitably we were going to have to do that. It wouldn't have mattered which publisher we were with. We would have had to go to Steam with that. And it just takes a lot of work. Like, Hopefully the community will understand and bear with us as we try to get all the functionality restored. It's tough, right? But there's still a lot of people playing it, which is a testament to the game. And we do plan to support it uh, continually. I think even just recently there was maps, new maps released for it. So we plan to keep supporting that project. Okay, uh, most games these days are abandoning the whole World War II type settings. Now going from modern to new future takes up, uh, is this something you guys thought about for this title? Uh, well, we thought that there's probably enough content and interesting stories and history on the Eastern Front that people just really were really aware of. So obviously heroism isn't confined to an individual war, uh, but for us, when we were looking at what was going to happen for Company Heroes 2 and how we were going to leverage it, it seemed like the logical choice. A lot of people know the Western Front, a lot don't know the Eastern Front. There's a lot there to work with, so that's why we went with that in this case. Um, yeah. Alrighty. If you could describe your game in, in three words to someone who has never played any of your titles, what three words would you choose? Which three words would I choose? Um, I would say... God smites thee. I think it's just what it is. It's like, I love the fact that you are like up high controlling the large numbers of, of, of squads and units that are moving around. And I, I love watching the battles unfold. Like, it's kind of nice that you don't, it's not Twitch. So you're not just kind of mashing away at it. You just kind of get to enjoy the fruits of your strategy. And you just, yeah, you just kind of feel like you're dropping you know, reign of terror on everybody. So that's kind of a nice feeling. Kind of like how you're making all these decisions and not, not all the troops are 100% behind you. They're kind of, I uh, can't believe this guy's making us do this. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, you're putting them in pretty tough spots for sure, definitely. Uh, the first Company of Heroes made it to OSX and so have a few of your other titles. Will the same happen to Company of Heroes 2? Uh, and what about a Linux port? Um, I don't really know anything about a Linux port, but I do know that there is a plan not firmly in terms of dates, but for OS X. We definitely want to get there. Okay, even though you guys are mainly known for your PC strategy games, you guys did try to create a couple of console titles, The Outfit and Space Marines. Is this something you guys would want to, would want to do? If so, what next generation console is looking appealing to develop for? You know, I think this is another thing that is great out of the Sega acquisition. Like, I think we know what we do best. I think what we do best is RTS and what we do best is PC. So I don't really see us, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't definitely for certain discount the fact that we may ever end up doing something different, but in the near future, we're, we're planning on sticking with what we're best at. All right, uh, your first PC game was Homeworld, which had been acquired by Gearbox Entertainment during the auction they had. Has there been any communication between Gearbox and your team regarding the future of the franchise? No, we're, we're, they've basically bought the uh, IP and uh, it sort of stands with them at this point, yeah. Okay, uh, Company of Heroes 2 has been in beta for a while, recently hit open beta. What are some of the biggest changes made during, uh, due to user feedback? Well, really it wasn't a lot of stuff. There was a lot of tuning things that people wanted to see improved or balance issues that needed to be improved. I know our UI team worked really hard to correct a lot of the feedback they were getting. There was a lot of usability feedback 
which is natural at that stage of the game, right? So uh, there was a lot of effort put into channeling people into making sure all the usability is at, like at the top notch level. Uh, most of it's just balanced, though. Yeah. Okay, th those were questions by our uh, the writer George here. We got yeah. some fan questions for you guys. Right. All right, uh, will Company of Heroes Two allow users to rebind keys? To rebind keys, I believe you can. Yes. Um, I don't know specifically how much control we have over rebinding keys, so I'm not really too sure that I should for sure outright answer that one. Okay, are you planning it or releasing patches and support left for this game like the first one? Oh yeah, there's definitely a really big plan for uh, post-launch. Uh, there's going to be free maps that are map packs that are released, and then there's going to be a lot of premium content as well. It's not like, it's definitely in our genetics to keep supporting for like the long term so we plan on definitely trying to push this one as long as we have COH1 and longer. Okay some of the community is disappointed that the pre-order bonus is an exclusive commander. Is there any concern that bonuses like this will throw off the balance in the multiplayer portion of the game? Some feel that uh, it will create a pay to win aspect. Is this a concern? Not really. I mean the beta, the balance testing and tuning is an ongoing thing that we can carry on and, and update as we go along. So uh, anything that we release will definitely be well tested. We're not just going to drop something, you know, a shark in the water and, and, and put, it, put it out there. Like, we, it doesn't do us any good to anger the community is the main thing, right? We want to keep them happy. So everything that we release will be put through the exact same paces as we do for full release. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Danny Bilson. Danny Bilson Im implicated Dawn of War 3 would launch in August 2012 to February 2013, but all efforts were refocused on Company of Heroes 2. What will happen to the work completed on Dawn of War 3, or and will we see, ever see it? As it stands right now, Dawn of War 3 was uh, cancelled, so uh, I haven't heard anything to say otherwise at this point. Okay, well thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of that one. Yeah.